Holy frick! Like... Jeez, jeez, ah. So I, I just, as you can probably tell, I saw um, the latest Star Wars movie, Star Wars, well, okay, gotta say it, it's actual title, um, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, that's kind of confusing, I will say, but I won't hold it against the movie. But, and yeah, I just saw it, I just came home from watching it, and before we get into this, the best way for me to describe it is really really good really good really great I wouldn't say that it's not really really great I'll go more into what I mean it by that without spoilers cuz it's like since it's the fanboy response it's really really hard for me not after I see a big movie like Star Wars to not get spoilers and try and keep my mouth shut for you guys, but I'll do my best. I'll basically only like say the key things that you saw in the trailers that are kind of a big, big giveaway that won't come in surprise that you won't, you guys won't get mad at me for. So that's all I'll talk about and overall my subtle subtlety th thoughts on the movie. But hello everyone. Let's get an intro. I'm Log On for Eleven. Welcome to another fanboy response. And today again, I'm going to. Discuss my thoughts on Rogue One Star Wars Story, the first spin off film, anthology film, in this new Star Wars set of films that they're trying to make. And so, technically, it's like a sequel to the prequels or a sequel to Revenge of the Sith, so a sequel to that prequel, but it's also, in a way, a prequel to their original trilogy. Okay, basically um, what this film is, is it's the opening crawl to that you see in the beginning of A New Hope. And yeah, like I said in the beginning, it's, it's very, it's really, really good, but it is not perfect. It's, it has a few flaws in it, but right now I'll get to like my overall um, stuff, like my thoughts on it oh, without getting spoilers. It, oh, I'm gonna have to watch this a couple more times since it's the first time I saw it today. It may be more grittier than all of those movies, um, both three and five. As much as I love Force Awakens, um, one of the things that I think that this movie did better is its fight sequences. This is probably one of the best battle sequences I have ever seen out of all the Star Wars history. Okay, so I think now's a good time at this point in the video to like explain what I meant in the beginning of it. Like my reaction like oh, that and me saying like how I think it's really really good but not really great how it's a flawed movie. And the reason why I said it's flawed is because like the weakness, the one of the biggest weaknesses of the movie is the first half. The first half isn't terrible, it, but far from it. It is not terrible. It is really, really good. It's just kind of slow. Um, getting to like, okay, okay, okay. And I don't know why, because again, and I'll say those things without spoiling them later on the, some things in the beginning that were really, really great that stood out to me. But I don't know. Like in the first ha half of the film, like it, it was slow, and you could definitely tell it was slow, but. Second half, like especially the third act, second act um, of this film is when you catch uh, more interest in the film by the second act. But the third act is one of the best. It really, really saves um, the movie, making it just from really good to really, really great, but still flawed, but still really, really great. That third act like really, really changes your perspective of the movie. It uh, makes it from uh, just a pretty good movie to a phenomenal finale. It's one of the best finales I've ever seen. One of the best climaxes I've ever seen in a Star Wars film. It was, ah, ah, ah. It's, it, it, I, again, I can't um, explain it too much without exploring, um, spoiling it for you guys, but I'll do my best not to, okay? The climax is one, features one of the best battles 
ever in any Star Wars movie. And that is amazing for the fact that there is only there is no Jedi in this movie if you don't count um, um, Darth Vader or the Beast. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's all rebels, and it's one of the best. It's it beats out Darth Maul fight sequence. Fight me on that. Fight me on that. It is way better. As much as as great as the Darth Maul battle in Phantom Menace is great, this tops it. Like in fact, like not in the climax, like in the beginning. One of the great things, and even though it's slow, but still okay, first half. That was one of the, my favorite things in uh, the first half. Also, there was also really, really great fight sequences. This whole movie just had one of the best fight sequences ever. It's And it all involved rebels. It was just... And, mm, 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 yeah! Uh. Another one of the big reasons, like, why this movie was so great in my mind, and, like, how it really, really seemed unique and different compared to all the other... Um, Star Wars movies that we've had, not just because of the an amazing, phenomenal second half, uh, um, but also because, and, and Force Awakens did this too, um, but that's because we hadn't had a Star Wars movie in the longest time since before the last year, 2005. So I felt this way in Force Awakens because we hadn't had a Star Wars movie in a while and seeing Star Wars again in Force Awakens really, really, really so happy in that reason. But in this mo in Rogue One, I felt so happy and like it uh, made me feel like a kid watching Star Wars for the first time. I'd say it gave me that um, in more ways than Force Awakens did. Even though I'm so giddy and so laughing and just like jumping up and out of everything that I saw in Force Awakens, I think I did that more in Rogue One because. Right from the first time that we ever see a stormtrooper, I completely went, because <gasps> it, um, the detail that they went into this movie to make it really, really seem like, yes, this does seem like it would be the, um, this is what, um, it would look like if it was the events before the beginning of A New Hope, um, in the fourth one. Um, that was released in 1977. Like, the design they have for the Stormtroopers made me so happy. That was one of the little things that I love about the movie, but it's such a small thing, but how realistic they made those Stormtroopers. And again, this is what Force Awakens had. But the practical effects, practical effects are back. If there's one thing I hate about the prequels that I know a lot of people also don't like about it, is the constant CGI and not relying so much like the originals did on practical effects. And they... Um, not to say that um, Rogue One, like Force Awakens, doesn't use CGI, because just like Force Awakens, this has CGI in it, but only on stuff where you're supposed to have CGI and where it matters, and that's, of course, in space. You can't go practical by having a spaceship um, fly around through space. No, you got to make that CGI and have that green screen, and they do that, and because of that, it's one um, with stuff like that, like the Star Destroyer, that is one of the best CGI animation um, I've seen. It's so beautiful. This movie better be nominated at the Oscars for Best Visual Effects because it's, ooh, ooh, it's, yeah, it's, and there's so many cameos. I mean, like, saying what the cameos are, all, all of them um, will be spoiler for all of you, but, like, um, the the one that's obvious is, of course, um, Darth Vader. You saw him in the trailers. He's in it. I won't say how many times he's in the movie, but there's one moment in this movie. It's one of the best Darth Vader moments ever. Okay, okay, I don't think it's probably the best out of the number one greatest Darth Vader moment. I mean, I think that's kind of the fanboy in me is saying that. But, oh, it's, it's up there. The first moment you see... Um, Darth Vader, while it's good, and I did jump up, um, up and down and go like, oh, ah, I guess Darth Vader! Um, but the uh, moment that, um, you, when you see it, you'll definitely know what I'm talking about. When you see that, it will be such a relief for you, and it's, it, it kind of seems like, parts of it, the moment kind of seemed like a horror movie, it really did, but it's still, it's, a, such a BA moment and it's th the reason why I'm specifying that moment in particular and why I'm exemplifying that moment is because like the last time we saw Darth Vader on the screen 
and James Earl Jones doing his voice as Darth Vader was from Rever Revenge of the Jedi at the end of Revenge of the Jedi where what was the last moment we saw of Darth Vader? The no, yeah, intimidating. No, um, so this makes up for that because of it. And having such a moment where you are just in shock and you're in fear, but you're also in such delight. It is so ah, uh, and it's it's a good way to leave off the movie with a pain. It's just ah, uh, and. Yeah, was, um, that was one of the things that made me feel like a kid again, seeing Darth Vader intimidating, like when you first see him intimidating in uh, A New Hope, the first shot you see of him is just, mm, mm, mm. And just so many things that, other things that I just can't explain now, because spoiler, that just made me smile and made me fanboy, because uh, is this is... I think it's funny now that I can say that I there I can now say that there's a Star Wars prequel that's good. That I'm so relieved in saying that there is now a Star Wars prequel that though there may be some um, people out there that may not have liked this movie, a good majority of people actually like this prequel of Star Wars. That just makes me so happy. And ah, I just yeah, um compared to the prequels um, how there's more bad things that I did not like about the prequels than good things I did like about the prequels. This, and similar to The Force Awakens, is the opposite of prequels, where, like, there's more good things in both Rogue One and Force Awakens that outweigh the bad stuff, and it's just... <sighs> so, yeah, from what you saw just earlier there, it showed that, like, this movie definitely made the fanboy in me really, really happy. This movie also, like, pulled me um, from the rope that I had tied above my waist. Like, pulled me in through its emotion that it kept throwing at me. But, like I said in the beginning, how I said, like, this isn't a perfect movie. And part of that's biggest reason is because um, the first half isn't great. It's kind of slow. It's still watchable. It's still enjoyable. I'm still entertained because all this new stuff and all like small stuff that I mentioned still in it. It that is a big problem. But another problem, um, not, not a problem, but thing, uh, me uh, I'm looking at this as a fanboy of Star Wars, if another nitpick I'd had to say would be the two main leads. Felicity Jones and Diego Luna. I got it right. Ah, that never happens. Um, but him, he, um, both um, Blissey Jones and um, Diego Luna in this movie as two main leads. They weren't bad. They weren't terrible. Acting wise, they did their part. They played it well, well, but not great. Where like they had distinct personalities that I really, really enjoyed with. And that was one of my favorite things about Force Awakens, was the characters. There wasn't one character that I did not like. Um, da um, Daisy Ridley is Rey. Rey, I'm, I keep debating now, and I'm still not sure, but I, I'm having I'm to still debate whether or not I think that um, Rey is a much better character than Luke. And I love the concept of Finn's character, how original of a character he is, how we got a perspective of Stormtroopers, which I've always wanted, and we finally got it, and they did in a direction Force Awakens that I loved, and how like um, the actor's personality shined, and they showed that throughout the movie. I didn't see that a lot in the movie, um, in this movie. And I can see why, I mean, like, um, um, in Force Awakens, people were, the characters were able to tell jokes since it was a fun, kind of sent of a family, um, film jokes thrown out of the way, um, with a little doom and gloom in that movie, but this, this movie had a, it was more grittier, a war gritty, um, film, and yeah, there are still jokes I still laughed a lot from, especially, I can't remember his name, but the droid feature in this movie. I'm gonna have to, no, I think I like BB-8 more, but he was still one of my, he's one of my favorite characters, but not really Felicity Jones and the other dude. Um, they were just dull. I mean, they weren't Hayden Christensen or Natalie Portman or prequels, um, bad, like, oh, terrible, but no, they did their part, but there's nothing special about them. Like, 
how special I got from Force Awakens, the actors in that. But yeah, the side characters though, they um, were very, very interesting. They were they didn't have as much personality like in the sense of um, Force Awakens, but they're still very, very interesting. Droid, probably best character. The blind guy, he was the most interesting. But um, yeah, all the other side characters, um, great. You're probably wondering what I thought of the general in this movie, the new general featuring this movie. He was good, he was over the top, but nothing can be as over the top as Hux. I, I still, I still adore Hux. There's, it's gonna be hard. It's like Amy Pond for me. It's gonna be hard um, to like top a character like that. But yeah, that's an, if I nitpick, that's another key thing that I think didn't take me out of the movie, but just, I was like, oh, I, I could, I found ways that, I knew ways of like, that they can make those characters better. There could be other creative ways, because it wasn't terrible. I mean, they did their part, but I think they could have done more with it, with their characters and their possible personalities, but... Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! There's one more, uh, probably more, but <laughs> there's... Something else I want to talk about. That was mm, so great. Um, this video is so jumbled. Like my way of talking about stuff, it's so backwards and all over the place. But again, my again my thoughts about this movie is so many things to talk about, but I can't organize it because so many things to talk about. I don't know where to start. But anyway, the X. Um, there are X wings. This isn't really spoiled because you kind of saw it in the trailer for Rogue One. I think, but like. And since it's a movie about rebels, you should expect there to be a lot of, quite a few of X-wing um, in-flight, in-flight X-wing battles. But it's, I again, I'll have to watch it again, um, movie multiple times um, or a second, to debate um, if um, the X-wing battles featuring this movie are better than, um, or at least on par with the one um, in A New Hope in the third act in A New Hope. Or in Return of the Jedi, because those X-wing battles, like they were so intense, you feel the emotion, you feel the dilemma, you feel the conflict. Even if they're not central characters, um, or they don't get as much screen time, except for New Hope, because we focus on Luke, and that um, gave impact. But in um, here, not spoil, but there, um, you don't have a deep connection with what's happening, like the X-wing battle in um, Rogue One. But for I don't know why, how, but yet you still feel emotion for it. You still, when you see an X-Wing pilot in his, um, his or her ship um, blow up, you go, oh, you feel the intensity and you feel, you jump from that and you feel shock from it. And as much as I love um, Force Awakens, the, that's the biggest thing that this had that Force Awakens did not have. Really, Force Awakens had great battles but um not great but the one between finn ray and kylo ren that was great um but like at the end force awakens the x um wing battle um destroying star killer base and force awakens again there i'm not gonna say it was terrible but it was kind of uh, it's obvious it wasn't clear focus in force awakens as the battle between ray and finn and kylo ren that was the main focus but in Rogue One here, the X uh, there isn't one bland X Wing um, battle scene that's terrible. You feel like um, the, um, there are scenes that could be just taken right out of one of the scenes in um, the original trilogy. Any of those movies, it's just mm. I I've read online like um, people questioning like was this film even worth it? Was it worth it to be even made? I'd say yes because like. Again, why I love the character of Finn in Force Awakens was because, like, we got a, um, we've never had a, a perspective or a viewpoint in the eyes of a stormtrooper. And this movie, just like what they did with the character of Finn, we get the perspective of the rebels, which we never really have seen before. And that so fascinating to me. And plus, um, this is the problem with that a lot of prequels um, mess up and mistake, but like with this, I know it's been up, but prequel, um, I, the greatest thing about it is that I can see it fitting 
in with the original trilogy. I could see this um, being the events that happened before A New Hope, and um, that's its this film's greatest accomplishment. Even if it had a lackluster beginning, it it still did its job well, and it's it doesn't seem to me like it is most definitely not um, kind of the filler film. No, it's... Mm, I know I'm dragging on here, but there's just so much to talk about. And I, there's so much more I can talk about, but if I talk any more about it, I'm just going to spoil it for you all. But nonetheless, um, I think you guys all deserve to hear me have a fanboy reaction. I... I talk a lot, um, especially when it comes to Star Wars, but I love Star Wars. Um, anyway, guys, go see Rogue One. Go see Rogue One. I think I'm going to be punching myself later if there's something I forgot to mention in this video, but I just wanted to just pour out there what I saw without spoiling too much. I think I've spoiled some stuff without even realizing it, but guys, that's my thought. Go Again. Go see Rogue One. Go see it. It's Star Wars. So if you haven't already, you're probably going to. But if not, if you it was in your mindset um, to go see it, I'm here telling you to go see it. That is an order in the first order. And yeah, I think that's it. Go Rogue. And guys, I'll see you in my next video. Happy holidays. And just go see it. Just go see it. Ah. Ah.